Most people understand aperture and shutter speed in how it relates to the exposure triangle, right? Aperture is simply the photographer controlling how small or wide the aperture blades are, which then in turn lets in a certain amount of light. He has control over that. And shutter speed, for the most part, is kind of similar. How long to expose the sensor to light. Those are two key decisions, aperture and shutter speed. So, what is ISO and how does it pertain to the exposure triangle? Actually, ISO is not part of exposure at all. More on that in a second. It's a big fat ISO sandwich out there and sooner or later, we all have to take the bite. Whoa, let's roll. Hi everyone, welcome to Palta Tech. Today we are talking about ISO, or ISO. Everything about ISO is confusing. Even the friggin' name is confusing. ISO is a rating scale that's managed by the International Association of Standardization, which is the main governing body that standardizes sensitivity ratings for camera sensors. Now, while many people think ISO should be called ISO, you know, because it stands for International Organization of Standardization, it is actually technically not an acronym. According to the organization, the name and pronunciation comes from the Greek root word isos, which means equal. And in this video, I will mostly use the term ISO because I come from a film background where we had ASA. Today, we're gonna focus on two key ISO topics. What exactly is it? and how does it relate to exposure. For many years, photographers simply referred to the exposure triangle as the application of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO and controlling the overall exposure of the image. Exposure, at its most basic level, is all about how much light reaches your camera's sensor. Your camera's sensor is like an ice tray filled with little cavities in it called photocytes. These photocytes have an assortment of red, green, and blue color filters over them. Light photons come pouring in from the front of the camera into these cavities on your camera sensor. As soon as this happens, all these little photocytes right here generate an electrical charge. It's not digital yet. It's analog voltage electrical charge. This water represents light. Light is now hitting the sensor. It is now hitting the sensor. Okay, now, the higher the ISO, the more your camera amplifies the electrical charge. So let's say you have it on ISO 400. It's amplifying it, amplifying the electrical charge, right? Now, the more the electrical charge is amplified, in other words, as you turn the ISO up, the brighter the image is. Here it is at 800. And here it is at 1600, okay? <laughs> Got that? And you control this through <laughs> the ISO dial. Now, here's the most important point of all. ISO is applied after the sensor is finished being exposed to light. It has absolutely no effect whatsoever on how much light is hitting the sensor. Only shutter speed and aperture affect exposure in that way. ISO does not. You getting this? Are you, are you getting this? It has nothing to do with increasing how much light hits your sensor. Now, because ISO is nothing more than your camera amplifying things after you've taken the photo and already finished exposing the sensor to light, you do not get better exposure by increasing the ISO. You only ever get better exposure by slowing down the shutter speed or opening up 
the aperture. An exposure that's taken at ISO 200 is exactly the same amount of exposure as one that was taken at ISO 3200. The sensor is exposed to exactly the same amount of light. And this is hugely important to remember. Okay, once the camera has applied your requested ISO by amplifying the electrical charge, I'm not gonna do that again, by amplifying the electrical charges in the sensor's photo sites, it's all finished, it's done. And each individual photo site's electrical charge is now sent from the sensor, from the sensor into the camera's analog to digital converter, which then turns the voltage into a digital value, which is a, it's a binary number. Think of little ones and zeros. This red pen is going to be the electrical charge coming from the sensor. I am the analog to digital converter. Here it comes. Okay, that was a very nice beach scene with some really nice uh, highlight details and shadow areas and really just an overall beautiful image with a nice blue sky. One, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. We're gonna put this into a JPEG and go. I bought that bullhorn just for this segment. Just saying. <laughs> now let's talk about ISO and noise. ISO does not actually create noise. ISO is amplifying the noise that's already there to begin with. Now the Fujifilm X-T3 camera has a native ISO range from 160 to 12,800. This is the camera's hardware analog ISO amplification range. And of that range, 160 is considered the lowest native ISO. That means that at ISO 160, the camera doesn't need to amplify the voltage at the sensor before the electrical charges are sent off to the camera's analog to digital converter. You got that? Now, on the X-T2, that ISO number is 200. And all things considered, this is generally your happy place. It's where you want to, you know, set it as much as you possibly can. Now, the camera also has little L and H markings on this dial right here. And this allows you to use what's called extended ISO range. On the X-T3, if you put the dial in L, the camera will allow you to use lower ISO than even the native base ISO of 160. On the H setting is the opposite end of the spectrum. You can extend the ISO, so to speak, all the way up to 25,000 or 51,200. Now, what you need to know about the low and high ISO extended settings on this dial is that they are not performing any native camera analog amplification to the electrical charges in your camera's photo sites. Think of it this way. Using L and using H on this camera is just like using that crappy digital zoom focus feature that you see in smartphones instead of using a real zoom. And as you turn up the ISO on the dial, you amplify the electrical charges more and more. This amplifies the noise and you get worse image quality. It's, it's a trade-off. Based on what I told you today, here are some key takeaways. Number one, whenever possible, always add more light to your scene instead of relying on simply increasing the ISO. ISO is not exposure and does not increase the amount of light that hits your sensor. Avoid using it as a crutch whenever possible. A good way to think of ISO is that ISO is basically a simulation of what your photo would have looked like if it had been properly exposed in the first place. Number two, ISO is very dependent on the camera, how ISO is handled, strategies for setting ISO, and even ISO noise differences between different models of the same camera brand can vary. Number three, ISO absolutely affects your raw photos. And if you use a value high enough, if you crank up the ISO high enough, even with raw, you will blow out your highlights 
More on this in my future ISO invariance video. Generally, ISO 6400 is about the max you'd ever want to go for good results. I, I pretty much never ever go beyond that. Most of the time I tend to hover between ISO 800 and 1600 if I'm needing that extra amplification. Well, let, me, let me put it to you this way. If I was at ISO 6400, you know, with the slowest shutter speed I could use and the widest aperture I could use and Home Depot was all out of light bulbs and I simply could not make the scene any brighter, <laughs> well then, screw it. I would shoot in ISO 6400 and then I would use adaptive ISO post-production in Lightroom or Capture One to selectively, the word is selectively, bring up the dark portions of the image I wanted to better expose without amplifying and multiplying the noise in the entire image. Bottom line here. I think having ISO in the exposure triangle is helpful, very helpful, to conceptualize how the various controls of the camera work together to create the image. However, you should remember that ISO is not exposure, and it's definitely not a substitute for getting as much light into your scene as you possibly can in the first place. In future videos, we will explore this concept further. Here's the thing about these videos. <laughs> Listen, I've missed seeing you guys. I, I can't make these videos so packed with, you know, information that each one is, is like an Encyclopedia Britannica. You know, here, here's the thing. What I'd like to do is see you guys more often, but we'll go on shorter dates. Okay, does, does that work? All right. Until then, it's been great to be back and and you will have another video from me coming this friday for sure if you've enjoyed this video please give it the like and subscribe <laughs> i mean the a like and subscribe it, give it a like you know what no i'm gonna go with the other i like the other one better it, it, the like and subscribe if <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, please give it the like and subscribe, and I will see you again real soon. So long. 50 times. It's hard work, as you can see. Okay. You all know your basic exposure triangle. <laughs> More chalk! I need an assistant. <laughs> You know, it's funny, that could be the outtake, you know, at the end of the video. <laughs> More chalk! More chalk! Thank you, sir. <laughs>